Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the 5th module of CN super important questions and in this module we have 7 super important questions from the model paper as well as previous game papers don't miss any of them and uh, solve these questions uh, so that you can easily score more than 80% marks in the exam and before starting, uh, please do like and subscribe it helps me make more videos like this so without wasting any more time, let's get started with the first super important question describe HTTP with persistent and non-persistent connection okay, we have to uh, describe HTTP with two types of connection which is persistent and non-persistent, okay persistent means always there and non-persistent means it is not always there okay so let's first discuss what is the non-persistent connection okay in non-persistent connection one tcp connection is made for each request and response okay so see here this is the server this is the client from for one uh, connection means sending one data there will be one connection made and then it will be broken then another connection will be made another connection will be broken that is not persistent one okay so the following uh, steps uh, happen when the connection is made the client opens a tcp connection and sends a request the server sends the response and closes the connection the client reads the data until it encounters end of file marker and then it closes the connection so uh, there will be a request sent, there will be a response happened, then each data will uh, transfer and then it will be over. For another data transfer, another request has to be sent, another response will come, another data transfer will happen. Okay, so this is the uh, diagram here, as you can see. This is the first part, this is the first handshake, second handshake, third handshake. After this, the file is read here and it is done. After that, another time, if you want to uh, read, another time it has to be happened, a connection should be made, and then an image will be read, and the connection is broken. So here, multiple uh, connections will come and break for each of the responses, okay? So in this example, there are two connections, okay? Uh, coming on to the second one which is the persistent connection http version 1.1 specifies a persistent connection by default so by default the newer http ones have only persistent connection in persistent connection the server leaves the connection open for more requests after sending a response okay so once a, a request is made and response is taken then unlimited number of times you can take the request and response and after that only it will break okay so in a single connection two image uh, two things were read image and a file but in the previous one for the same thing we had required two connections right so here server can uh, close the connection at the request of the client if, or if timeout has been uh, reached okay by two ways the connection will be closed either the client will tell the server close the connection or timeout will happen okay so this is more efficient because in a single uh, connection you can uh, send more data in less amount of time and uh, with less resources also it will cost uh, time and resources for uh, creating and terminating connection right so that is a redundant time so the better one is persistent one okay Moving on to the second super important question, explain HTTP request and response message format. Okay, so this is the request message format and this is the response message format. Okay, so in this what uh, there is in the first part you can see there is request line here and here you can see there is status line. Okay, that's the difference. Other things are same here, header lines, blank line and body. Okay, so body is the main thing. Uh, in the response there will be response and in the uh, request there will be the request what is uh, the data is to be requested okay and uh, in the header we will be having some information we'll be discussing what is the information there and in request we have a method here we'll be discussing what is the method and url and version you already know what is the url and the version and here also version is here and the status code and the phrase so the main things is the header name here and uh, the data which is being passed here and this is the request line and this is the uh, status line and sp means space cr means carriage written ef if means line feed okay so see here this is the following methods in the request message when a request is made okay when a request is made it can be either get request to get some data or a header request or it can be a put request to put some data send a document from the client to server or post data means send some information from the client to server or it can be trace delete connect or options okay these are the different methods and that method gets specified here okay in this part the method gets specified now the following are the header names in the request message in the request message there will be header uh, header is there right so what are the different types of header name for the request message okay for the request message the different headers will be user agent accept accept uh, language encoding care set authorization host date upgrade cookie if modified since and the uh, definitions are also given here okay so these are the information which is required to establish a connection okay and for the response message also there were headers for that it will have date upgrade server set cookie content encoding language length type location accept ranges last modified so this is all the information about the response message this is the information about the request message which is being sent okay so these are the things you need to write if they ask the question about http response and request message okay 
We go to the third important, uh, super important question. Explain, uh, describe in detail the services provided by DNS and explain the DNS message format. Two things are asked: services as well as message format. Okay. So services provided by DNS. There are four services provided by DNS. The first one is namespace. Namespace means we have right dot com, dot org, dot uh, edu, dot uh, in. So all these are called as namespaces. Okay. A namespace maps each address to a unique name. Okay. Address is mapped to a unique name. Okay. That can be organized. The domain namespace was designed uh, so that the names are uh, defined in a particular organized uh, manner. It, this is in the inverted tree structure. So here it will be uh, we will be having a root, and uh, below the root there will be sub uh, domains here, and the subdomains will have further subdomains. This is called as domain uh, namespace. Okay, so this is the first service provided by the domain name system. Okay, now second is internet. DNS is used in internet for categorizing the domain space trees. Now the uh, domain space is ready, but the categorization has to be done. So categorization can be either of three types, generic, country, or inverse domains. Okay. Either it will be generic or it will be country or it will be inverse domains. The third one is resolution. What do you mean by resolution? Mapping a name to an address. Okay. There is a name. We have to map to an address. Okay. This is the reverse of the previous one which we discussed address to uh, name right this is name to address that is called as name address resolution dns is designed as client server application okay a host that needs to map uh, calls a dns client called uh, resolver so what does resolver do it will take the name and it will map to an address okay there are two types of resolution recursive resolution and iterative resolution uh, resolution the fourth uh, service provided by the dns is the dns acts as a cache between the server request for a query name okay so whenever a query comes that query has to search in the main database but if dns has that data it will be sent from the dns only and it will save some time right so dns acts as a cache in between for the requests raised by the query okay the dns message format consists of two categories the query and the response both have the same message format as shown below okay so the query and the response these are the two kinds of messages and both have the same format okay so here we'll be having the following fields identification flags and here four types of uh, lengths are there here's the question answer section is authoritative and additional section so what is identification field it is used by the client to match the response with the query okay whatever the response has come and whatever is the query that has to be matched for that there will be one identifier that is in the identification field the flag field denotes whether the message is query or response okay it will say if the query or response is there the flag field will denote that next four fields define the number of each record type in the message so number of question records number of answer records number of authoritative records number of additional records how many number of uh, these things are there that is defined on the top okay and question section contains one or more question answer section contains one or more resource records or the answers authoritative section gives information about one or more authoritative servers for the query and additional information will be having additional information that helps the resolver okay so together these forms the dns message format okay very important question from exam point of view moving on to the next question which is differentiate between client server paradigm and peer-to-peer -peer paradigm okay this is in the model paper so what is client server client server means there will be a server here and there will be client client will be requesting for some uh, data and server will be providing that data that is called, called as client server paradigm in this paradigm the service provider is an application program called as uh, server process so server will be pro server will be providing the services and it run continuously the server will run always okay 24 7 it will be running and it waits for another application program Program called as client so it waits for the client to ask a question so that it makes a connection via the internet and asks for the service the client will ask for the service and server will provide that service so the following uh, figure illustrates the client server paradigm okay so this is the client here this is the client and this is the server in between which is the internet and this is also the uh, client between the client there are uh, switches present here because this is a switch this is a switch and this is also a switch okay and the server is present here so in the internet there will be a server which will be connected Connected to all the uh, clients okay so in this case the server is present here okay not in the internet the server is present here here from here all the connections are being made okay so this is the example of client uh, server paradigm the next one is the peer-to-peer -peer paradigm here there will be no need for a server why because all this uh, peer only will become the server as well as the client okay the responsibility shared between the peers so each of these is acting as a uh, client as well as a server whatever the data uh, whichever the peer has they will be sharing with those who are requesting that data okay so that was about the client server paradigm and peer to peer 
Moving on, we have super important question which is SMTP. Okay, how the mails are sent using SMTP? What is SMTP? SMTP is simple mail transfer protocol. The process of transferring mail occurs in three phases. Okay, so there are three phases in which a mail is sent. What we do, we will just write a mail and we will send it. Okay, that's all. But there will be three phases which will be happening in the background. Okay, the first is connection establishment. Second is mail transfer. Third is connection termination. Okay, what are the things? Establishing the connection, transferring the mail, and terminating the connection. So in connection establishment. After our client has made a TCP connection to the port 25, the simple mail transfer protocol SMTP server starts the connection phase. Okay, so connection phase will be started and it involves the following three steps. Okay, what it does the after the connection has been started by the client, uh, the SMTP sorry, by the SMTP server when the uh, connection has started, it sends 220 that it is ready to start the connect, uh, means uh, transfer of the data or it is not ready. 220 denotes ready, 421 denotes not ready. Then the client sends hello to identify itself to give information about what all its domain name and all. So the server will get to know who the client is. Okay. After that server responds with 250, that means the request is complete and the connection is established. After the connection is established, the mail will be transferred. The transfer of the mail happens in eight steps. Okay, it's very easy. The first is the client sends a mail from from whom it is coming okay at the top always you'll see right from whom the mail has come so that will be the first data which will be transferred by the client server response 250 250 means okay then the client sends uh, cpt2 means to whom it is being sent from where to whom then the, again the server response 250 then the client sends the data means the subject of the message after that the uh, server response 354 start the mail input means it uh, commands the client to uh, start sending the body of the message then the body of the message will be sent here and another uh, lastly uh, the server will respond 250 that means the mail is uh, ready to be sent okay and the uh, server will send the mail after the mail has been sent the connection termination will happen client sends a quick command okay and server responds with 221 means okay the quick command is successful so the connection is terminated okay so this is how in three phases the smtp works okay Going on to the uh, next super important question, which is explain services provided by transport layer with different protocols. Okay, transport layer comes under the application layer. Here is the application layer, and up below that comes the transport layer. So why do we uh, discuss transport layer in the module five, where all the things are about the application layer? See we need to use the services provided by the transport layer itself okay because there is no service at application layer you got the point at application layer there is no service transport layer only has the service so we need the transport layer to transfer the data so uh, for the process to process communication we need the transport layer okay so for that there are three common protocols the first is tcp second is udp and the third is sctp okay what is the uh, let's discuss each one by one the udp udp provides connectionless unreliable datagram service okay it is connectionless means a connection will not be established it will just send the data and there is no guarantee it will be re uh, reaching the destination so it's unreliable and it's a datagram service because it uses user datagram each, me each message is an independent entity encapsulated in a datagram so each message has no connection with the other message all the messages are independent entities udp has an advantage that it is message oriented which means it is suitable for transferring small unimportant and quick messages okay it will transfer very quickly because connection establishment termination data transfer phase all those things are not there it will just send the data and if it's received it's received if it's not it's not okay like that so it is useful for small unimportant and quick messages next is the tcp protocol tcp provides connection oriented reliable and wide stream service okay so it is connection oriented before sending the data there will be a connection made okay before uh sending any data there will be a connection made and after sending the data the connection will be broken it is reliable because it is secure in between the connections and it is wide stream means continuously the data will be sent it uses handshaking mechanism for exchanging the data one problem is that it is not message oriented so uh, it does not have boundaries uh, it does not put boundaries on the message exchange okay so uh, there will be no boundaries on the message exchange uh, so that takes some time and uh, it is a bit complicated okay uh, in the udp since it is not secure there is no boundaries unlimited data can be sent so but here there will be uh, it does not put boundaries on the message exchange so it is not message oriented okay last one is sctp which is similar to tcp but it is not byte oriented okay it does not send continuously as a stream of bytes but it is message oriented like udp so uh, any number of data can be sent it can provide multi-stream service okay there can be multiple streams with a single source okay that is sctp protocol okay these are the three protocols in the transport layer okay moving on to the next super important question which is write a note on ftp and discuss the ftp commands and responses so what is ftp file transfer protocol it is a standard protocol provided by the tcp ip 
for copying a file from one host to another host okay we are using ftp for file uh, transfer okay file transfer the below figure shows the basic model of uh, ftp so here as you can see there is local file system and here it is remote file system okay if you want to uh, transfer some uh, file from the local to the remote or from the remote to the local what we do is we'll be having a connection here this is the client and this is the server and the control process will be having the exchange of control information and data transfer process will having the change of data process information since client is used by the users so we need to have user interface in the client side okay easily you can make this diagram after that what you have to write is separation of commands and data transfer makes the ftp efficient see this is the data transfer and this is the control uh, command this is separate right if, if it is mixed it will be hard to handle but it is separate means it is more efficient ftp is more efficient the control connection remains connected during the entire ftp interactive session so this is always available but data connection will only happen when one file is to be transferred after it is transferred the data connection will be broken for a new file transfer a new connection is made and that will also be broken after the file transfer has been successful okay so data transfer is open and closed for each file transfer activity so some of the commands you can remember any five the commands used are abor abort or cdop change to parent directory cwd directory file name okay i'll tell you which are the easy ones okay you can uh, remember this one abort abort the previous command and you can rem uh, remember delete which is de delete the file name okay and list means list all the sub directories in the file mkd means directory name create a new directory pass means password and uh, another one you can uh, remember is quit quit means log out of the system and user means user information mode mode means which uh, mode it is it's stream mode block mode or compress mode so it's very easy here you can uh, choose your own uh, any five you can remember and write in the exam so these are some of the commands used in the control uh, connection okay after the commands after each of these command is uh, executed there will be a response generated okay so the response comes under the following it can be either 125 means data connection is open and 200 means command is okay 400 or something means error right uh, okay 425 cannot open the uh, data 450 means file action not again so all the error ones are here okay so all the error ones are here from 425 to 530 and the correct ones are this ones 150 200 and 230 250 user action uh, okay and 331 username okay password is needed so uh, these are the responses which you get for the above commands okay so that's all for the super important questions and make sure you uh, learn all these questions very well and don't forget to like and subscribe it helps me make more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one